Today we will be looking at the art of Keith Haring. You may recognize some of his art from his distinctive figure drawings. Keith Haring is an American artist who was born in 1958 and passed away in 1990. Some of his more famous works include Crack is Whack and Ignorance Equal Fear. Both of these works are works that we'll be looking at today. His artwork belongs to the art movements of pop art and street art. First, let's learn more about these two art movements. So what is pop art? Pop art is a style of art that originated in the 1920s, several decades before Herring was born. Watch the video, What is Pop Art? Art Movements and Styles to learn more about the history of pop art. You can find a link in the description box below. Next, what is street art? Street art is art created in a public space for everyone to see. While street art as an art form started as graffiti, these days not all street art is considered graffiti. Here are some examples of Herring's art. While he is most famous for his line paintings and drawings, Herring also created several sculptures during his lifetime, including this one titled The Boxers. He even painted a BMW in 1990. So let's learn a little bit more about Keith Herring. He originally started as a subway graffiti artist. Remember how street art grew from graffiti? Over his lifetime, he made friends with many famous artists that he collaborated with. After his death, Madonna dedicated one of her concerts to him and donated all of the proceeds to AIDS charities. Most importantly, Herring used his art to spread important social and political messages. You can see Keith Herring's dedication to making art about society in his famous mural, Crack is Whack. This piece was created in 1986 in New York City. At the time, there was a widespread use of crack cocaine amongst the American public. Although he himself used hallucinogenics and other drugs, Herring was against crack cocaine because he felt it was designed to benefit the seller while making the user aggressive, irrational, and addicted. Herring had a studio assistant and a friend who started to abuse the drug, and although Herring tried to get his friend help, he was not able to help him overcome his addiction. It was in these circumstances that Crack is Whack was created as Herring's personal response to the crack epidemic. You can see that he painted this mural on a wall on an abandoned handball court. Herring was actually arrested for vandalism after creating this piece on public property without a permit, but due to media attention and local support for Herring's anti-drug message, he was released without charges. Next, let's look at some historical and cultural context about the time when he, Keith Herring was alive. Herring lived as an openly gay man, something that was very rare at the time since LGBTQ2 awareness in the public was low. As such, Herring dedicated much of his art and life to raising awareness about LGBTQ issues such as safe sex. The 1980s also marked the beginning of the AIDS crisis, where many people, especially people in the LGBTQ2 community, got sick with AIDS, which was a new disease at the time. Herring himself was diagnosed with HIV in 1998 and used his art to bring public awareness to this topic. Fun fact, if you watch Grey's Anatomy, Season 6, Episode 15 touches on the beginnings of the AIDS crisis and how it affected healthcare. One of Herring's last and arguably most famous works is this logo he designed for Best Buddies, which was created 10 days before his death from AIDS-related complications. Best Buddies is a school program that pairs people with and without intellectual and developmental disabilities together as a way to build community. On their site, it says that throughout their participation, people with an intellectual development disability form meaningful connections with their peers, gain self-confidence, self-esteem, and share interests, experience, and activities that many other individuals take for granted. I've included a link to a short video about the program in the description box below if you want to learn more. After seeing some examples of Herring's artwork, how would you describe it? Here are some of the words that come to mind for me when I see his art. Bold, bright, colorful, meaningful, and memorable. Finally, let's analyze one of Herring's artworks together. This piece is called Ignorance Equals Fear. What do you think the meaning of this piece is? In this piece, the words help us understand Herring's message. It says, ignorance equals fear, silence equals death, fight AIDS, act up. This artwork is clearly encouraging viewers to educate themselves about AIDS so they can help fight the spread of the disease. While Herring was very literal with his work, often artists will use symbolism to help their audience understand their artwork. Look again at this artwork. Can you see any symbols that you recognize in the piece? 
you might notice that the figure's poses are see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. This is an easily recognizable pose. There are even monkey emojis for it. The purple triangle is also a symbol, although it has a darker meaning. The purple triangle is the symbol Nazis gave to LGBTQ prisoners in the concentration camps during World War II. Now think about how these symbols help reflect Herring's message. And that's it for our lesson on Keith Herring. I hope you enjoyed learning about this inspirational street artist and social justice trailblazer. If you want to learn a bit more about Keith Herring, I've included a short four-minute documentary link in the description box below. Thank you for watching!